what Henry Ford said. And it's a philosophy that I live by when they were doing an intelligence test. They thought that Henry Ford was dumb because he didn't know some of the common questions and stuff that they were asking. I don't know if this is true, but I read that it was true. They was on trial. And Henry Ford told him, he, at that time, he's like, I got buttons on my telephone. Why do I need to know this? I can hit a button. I can have the expert in any area come to my office and teach me or show me or perform yeah. anything that I want to know. That is power. And how you play, put people in concert or in mm-hmm. an accord. You can't do nothing by yourself. It takes a team. It's and a lot time. of people can't build a team. We call that a cross-functional team. Yeah. That's like in, in the corporate world, you know, one of the biggest skill sets is can you manage a cross-functional manage team? That's what they always ask me. My experience, I manage cross-functional teams. I don't go in there and build defense missiles or whatever it may be, aircraft or whatever it is. I put a cross team together of brilliant minds and I bring up the right questions. I bring Mm -hmm. up the right challenges, push everybody into the same category. Because what people do and what I notice is if we're baking a cake and let's just say I got five employees, one person is supposed to go to the store and buy the cake mix, the eggs. Let's just say I got two people buy two. One person buying cake mix, eggs. Then I got another person buying milk. I got another person that's buying that's buying me stuff like pots, the pans to cook it in, a knife to cut it, uh, maybe even some frosting. And I got another person that's sitting there. They, their job is to collect all the ingredients and put it up in its proper place. And then you got another person that's going to take it out and actually whip it up and make the cake. And then, you know, one person that's going to decorate it. For some reason, nobody will communicate on their own. What will happen nine times out of 10, and I've seen this over and over in business, is the people that's going to the store, we call that a supply chain. Those are my supply chain people. They'll sit there and they'll go to Publix or whatever grocery store near you and they'll say, you know what? We ain't got no eggs. And they'll come back and say, oh, I couldn't get eggs. They ain't got eggs. So, oh, well, we can't bake a cake. We had a work stoppage. We can't bake a cake because Kroger ain't got no eggs. So this is where you need Fucking that mind up. to come through and say, <laughs> uh, so now everybody's sitting around there waiting on the next person to do this or whatever. And so this is where you need that overall mind to come down there and say, you know what? Mm-hmm. Did you take your ass to Kroger? The Kroger got eggs? When is Publix gonna get eggs in? Is, is they coming in? I need to know if, if the Publix mm-hmm. don't have these eggs in, when they gonna get them in? Well, they gonna have some in tomorrow. Okay, well, that's a day delay. I can manage that, I might can deal with it. Oh, they're not getting any in the next week? Okay, well, I need you to get on the phone to Food Lion. I need you to go to Food Lion. I need you to go to Kroger. Wherever the hell you gotta go, go Harris Teeter, go give me some damn eggs. Well, Harris Cheetah got eggs with their dollar more. Okay, fine, I'll take that risk. I'll pay a dollar more to satisfy my customer that's waiting on this cake tomorrow. I gotta have it. So then this person procure me eggs and they bring them in and they just bring them in and they just set them on the counter. Meanwhile, the person that's in charge of putting everything up and procuring it, they just sitting there, they laughing and talking because they laugh, they know, well, we don't have eggs. So now if somebody got to be looking at the overall process, poking mm-hmm. like, yo, yo, why, why are you chilling? I got, we have to bring the team together and say, look here, we found eggs. You be on deck. The minute they walk through that door, you grab them eggs and you get them cool. Matter of fact, don't get them cool. Take two of them eggs out and stop them and give them to the person that's whipping them up or whatever. So that way they can crack it and start whipping this cake. You manage and get this oven going because people just do their part and they will just stop. But in business, you got to run what we call the operation and you got to push it all the way through. So boom, make everybody put the cake in there. Now the cake is in the oven. How many, you know, how much time we got. And then things that happen, you know, the oven may not function, you know, well, damn, the oven went out. Those things happen in business, you know. So you got to start troubleshooting. Hey, did did you pay the gas bill? Yeah, the gas bill pay. The oven just gone. Okay, well, we got to purchase a new oven. In the meantime, can we go next door and bake this cake? Hey. Can I bake this cake or two cakes, whatever, today for you to get this cake out the door while we got another oven that's coming in in the, in the meantime? And, uh, you know, I can't get another oven for another week or two because uh, they're short at home. Do you buy the loaves? I went everywhere else. 
This is stuff that you have to manage. So it's like, okay, in the meantime, what can I do? I'm not just going to sit there, not make money, not bake cakes. Can I borrow my neighbor? Look here. Let me let me slide you a few books. The usual oven. I got this many cakes I got to bake or whatever. Or, damn, is there anywhere I can go rent a, a, a oven temporarily to keep my operations going? Yeah. Or, or is there any alternative technology? Will I even be even, is there, a, what they call it, an air fryer? Is there a feature on it that I could use? You know, some you, you always got to think of what, you know, can I do? It, uh, can I use a hot plate or, or hell, uh, 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 what they call those little ovens? My little oven, my, uh, you know, oh, the, uh, easy bake uh, shit. Easy bake. Yeah, you know, damn it, <laughs> get enough easy bakes yeah. to get this stuff done. You know, thinking what you can do until you finally you got that frosting on that cake and pushing it out to the door. And that's how you have to think of your life. Think of your life. Problems are always, always. going to come yeah. in everything that you do. You just got to be able to have a workaround. And hell, these are even lessons that we even learned in the podcast. Yeah. You know, as we we went out there to think, first time we went, we did the lessons learned. We uh, didn't have the mics charged. I think some mics went out. We didn't have them properly charged. No, it was the, the lights. The lights. We, yeah. yeah, we had one well, we set did, of lights. Uh, Taylor Smoke, one of the lights. Yeah, yeah. The so lights we, went. he went and got a charger so that if the light did go out, we could just hook that bitch up to the charger. Granted, that light still went out though, because I ain't hooked the shit up. But my bad. But we got the means. We got, so the, we got means. the means. We got the means. But all our equipment was starting to go because we had travel, and a lot of our mics and stuff were battery operating. The interviews went so long, and we were trying to do it. So at the end of the day, a lot of our stuff was going dead, and we had mm -hmm. to try to rush what we're doing, and we couldn't do yep. the interviews and the consistency. So we took that as a lesson learned in that con in, in that contingency. So now it's like we charge everything up. The night or uh, or before, and now we have a means to if right on location. If something go down, we can replace it, and we can be charging right then and there. Okay, well, they, well, we filming with this. Okay, this right here is charging right now on spot. We got we got the means to charge this right here. We don't need no outlet because we don't. Sometimes you might not have an outlet. We may be limited. Well, don't worry about it. I can put it in the car. I mean, because what we did when we went to Atlanta and did the one with Rob yeah. and, and Jay, I had Mike's charging in the car. In the car, yeah. See, yeah, so you know, we got equipment. We learned a lot of shit. Like, since I joined after five, I swear it seemed like it was just shit constantly that I was like having to really pay attention to because I never managed a podcast. I've only ever just done the Me podcast either. on here. I just do operations. I just, I just being an operations manager and knowing how that. Now we hear and pushing, pushing operation. I mean, like, like, like that's why it's good though. Look, we have three cameras going because yeah. we discovered that our cameras. We didn't, and then in pressing, we didn't realize that the cameras would cut off in thirty minute ink frames or whatever. Mm -hmm. They they would go. They went dead on them. One camera went dead. The other one shot off, and we had to restart it. We we three cameras now, but we had that one consistent now. Now we got mm -hmm. good mics that'll keep it going all the way through. We are working on our sound when we're doing these. We finish, and now we realize that hey, we got to get better with our sound. So we come, we got we gonna get new mics coming yep. through and sound boards and everything else to grow. And this is the thing you have to look at in your business relationship, whatever else that you're dealing with. Yeah, and, and like sometimes you said, the team, the team. We talk, and, we talk to each other. 